everybody welcome to this special session of uh, Sinfonietta Strings, a conversation with one of the composers of the pieces uh, on your winter and spring rep, Benjamin Martin, who wrote, Are We There Yet? Uh, it's very exciting to have Benjamin here because not only is he a composer of the piece that you're working on, but he's also a former assistant conductor of Sinfonietta Strings. So he has a special connection to the ensemble uh, and it's very exciting to see him here today and to be working on his music. Um, I have a bank of questions that we um, developed and were submitted by Symphony of Musicians last week. But before we crack into those, I would like to open the floor to Symphony of Musicians to pose questions uh, about being a composer, about having written Are We There Yet, about your preoccupations, about your, your, your background, your future plans uh, to Benjamin. And if you would like to say those out loud, you may. If you'd like to type them in the chat, you may also do that. So I hereby open the floor. All right, well, I'm going to ask a question to get started then. And if you have a question, uh, while I'm asking my question, then, oh, we get, what inspired you to write, Are We There Yet? asks Gabby. Um, great question. Um, so firstly, hello, everyone. Um, I'm really um, excited to be here talking with you all. Um, and I'm so thrilled um, that you're playing this piece. It feels very special, as, as um, Dr. Holter said. Um, I used to uh, assistant conduct for um, Symphony of Strings, and um, I know the kind of amazing work um, you all do with um, the wonderful Miss Willett. So it just feels very special to be here. Um, in terms of inspiration, um, uh, so hmm, it's inspiration is a hard word. <laughs> um, I, I think I think um, uh, when. I talked with, um, I, I did a lot, I had a sort of phone conversation with Miss Willett about um, the piece before it was written. And she gave me this wonderful sort of list of things um, to sort of think about. Um, so like um, rhythmically engaged music, um, contrasted with sort of slower, more like legato material and unexpected rests. I remember that um, uh, uh, especially as being a thing that, um, she said she enjoys. So it was really about making a, a lot of my um, musical, like compositional practice is about making sort of bespoke pieces for specific people to fit their um, specific skills and interests. So oftentimes with any with any person that I'm writing for, if they ask me to write them a piece, I'll sit them sit down with them and say like, what things do you like to do? What things don't you like to do? Who are some of your favorite composers? Um, that sort of thing. So it's really about making a thing for a specific person as opposed to some sort of like divine inspiration. But the title, um, Are We There Yet, is sort of um, a, a vague reference to my various COVID-related frustrations. <laughs> um, but I also, it kind of the, the way the piece um, came out, it reminded me of kind of like a, like a car ride. Um, the way, there's a lot of like sort of repeated, um, repeated notes um, and I don't know, I just thought of a, I thought of like cars whooshing. So it's kind of a reference to both of those things. So would it be a fair enough to, statement to say that these kids and what they can create and like to do with music might have been part of your inspiration? Absolutely. Absolutely. I definitely wrote um, this piece with um, uh, this group in mind. and. Yeah. Um, all of your wonderful musicality that I'm, 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 I, I'm sure I know some of you, not all of you, but um, I'm, I, I know the kind of work that um, you all get done with Miss Willett. So definitely, like, um, whether you know it or not, you helped shape kind of how this piece turned out. So, yeah. And I get the part about a car ride because huh. there's points in it where the rhythm is extremely driving, and you driving in the sense of pushing forward, not mm. with a wheel. And so you you get this little bit of a feeling of a, a machine, right? A little hmm. bit of that is is my impression of it. Might not be what you were intending, but there's definitely this momentum, this forward movement. Hmm. One of my teachers used to say when when asked about inspiration that one of the things that composers do, and all, all artists do it, and a lot of people in general do it, 
is they have they they have like a basket in their minds or in their brains and they fill that basket with various things that they encounter whether it's films or you know other pieces of music or art or, or conversations they have people that they know real life experiences um and then when you shake that basket and the things in it fall into a particular shape that phenomenon is inspiration huh um, and it, it, to me it seems like you had a couple of things in your basket there that happened to fall into a particular shape um for this piece and one of them was working with symphonietta in the past and one of them was this phenomenon of like the sort of car ride and one of them was your lived experience during the, the pandemic of like I, I imagine maybe some impatience or frustration with the course of events certainly that's very beautifully put i love that um i love that metaphor very cool yeah uh, do we have another question or shall i reach into my question bag oh we got we got several uh what made you want to ask the fast and driving parts but then the church-like parts uh right um great question so i actually um wrote the sort of church-like part this like slow section first um and i sent it off to there's a very direct answer to this question i sent it off to miss willett and she's like this is great but you should add some stuff here that's like harder because <laughs> um, we can do harder things. So that's um, that's part of what inspired the more um, fast and driving um, material is just a sort of um, a sort of uh, request request for like a technical and rhythmic challenge. Um, but also, I thought it would be um, a fun thing to experiment with. Um, because the, the sort of the stuff in the middle relates kind of to the stuff that happens at the end. Like the stuff at the end is, is, is sort of like a sped up version of the slow corral in the middle. Um, uh, but yeah, um, shall I just go through these um, in the chat? Okay. Um, so I, for music, um, I am still attending Oberlin Conservatory. I mean, I'm going into my last semester um, in February. Um, uh, so yes, I've studied, um, I actually entered as a vocal performance student, um, mm -hmm. now I'm in my fifth year now. Um, and then my sophomore year, I switched, uh, to the composition major. Um, uh, uh, what need, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, can I, can I ask for a little elaboration Please. on your response? Every, so, um, that's a school that you're attending to study music right now, but I would like to know a little bit more about your preparation, maybe even as a middle schooler and a high schooler uh, studying music or, or participating in music. Got it. Yeah. Um, so my first musical experiences, um, my first big musical experiences were in middle school building, singing in a children's choir. Um, I sort of didn't really have a sense of what I wanted to do. Um, I was just I was a very sort of distracted bad student <laughs> um like not like malicious but i like you know didn't do my homework all the time and whatever but uh my mom sort of encouraged me to go to this audition for this children's choir i was like oh okay fine 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 and then the first rehearsal it was just like this amazing experience of like making music with other people creating something that no one individual in the group could have made by themselves, like in service of this sort of greater thing. Um, and so I continued singing um, uh, in choirs and studying. I played piano a little bit for a, a minute. I played percussion for a minute, um, sort of tried a bunch of different things out um, and got pretty serious about singing. But it wasn't until the end of high school that um, I sort of uh, fell in love with like, there was this big, I don't know if you um, know the composer Benjamin Britten at all. I'll put it in the chat um, because if you do not know him, you should, he's amazing. Um, there was a big um, centenary year celebrating the music of Benjamin Britten um, when I was maybe in high school, still singing in the choir. And um, I was just floored by all of his amazing music and like orchestral music as well, which I didn't really know as much about. So I sort of started looking at um, the scores for these pieces and trying to figure out what was going on. And that was the sort of first, um, those were the first sort of moments where I was like, ah, maybe I want to do the composing thing. Because composing is is in a way, it's also like working with others to create a thing that um, neither one of you could have done on your own. It's like an extension of that kind of collaboration thing. 
Um, so I, I took a couple of composition lessons at the end of high school um, and did some summer festival things um, and at the end of high school. And then that, that sort of love continued into college and made me want to pursue that kind of full time. Thank you. I now invite you to move on to the next question in the chat. Got it. <laughs> um, uh, wondering if you are planning on becoming a composer as your career. Um, that is the general plan. Um, then I, I can't, I, um, I tend not to, right now I'm just focusing on kind of the next thing, which is like graduate school. So right now my, um, my project is just like applying to various graduate schools and doing these auditions, and whatever. Um, but yeah, there's, there's um, if I could find a way to make money doing this thing that I love, that would be incredibly ideal. O obviously, I think with any sort of musical practice, there's, you need to have a sort of um, a, like bus business sense, business acumen and figure out like, because there are many different ways to do the things that you love. Um, besides like just playing in an orchestra or just being like a soloist. Like, um, and one thing that I really love about composing and like people who are making new music in general is that there are a lot of really cool um, projects in these communities that you can kind of participate in to um, augment, act as an extension of um, your work and, um, uh, sort of help garner financial support for that. Um, but this all to say, yes, I would like to do that. I just don't know what shape it's going to take at this point in my life. And I think that's okay. We don't need to know all the things <laughs> all the time. Um, why did you put triplet quarter notes in? Uh, it's a great question. Um, I, well, okay, so, as I said before, I, I, I can answer this really technically and not technically. So I'll, I'll try to answer it somewhat technically first. I wrote the middle section, the slow section first, and that's in three, four. Um, and so whenever you're structuring a piece, um, the notes are important, but something that's, I think a lot of composers would argue that the hardest part is like making the overall form, like what you're doing with these materials. So I wrote that first section, which is these, slow notes in three, four, these slow eighth notes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, so I have this opening material, this slow section and this fast material at the end, but I don't want it to just be like, there's an idea, we're moving on to the next idea, we're moving on to the next idea. So I wanted to figure out a way that this slow material could kind of creep in in the beginning section and then eventually overtake um, the rest of it. So those triplets are like a way to express that kind of slow idea in a faster tempo. If that makes sense. Also, I, I just foreshadowing. Like foreshadowing, foreshadowing, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, um, so that was the thought behind it. I also just like triplets, but who doesn't love a good triplet? Yeah. yeah. So I've got a couple questions here that we formulated last week uh, that I want to put to you. Uh, and the first one is a really kind of a, um, uh, a, a, a it's a, it's a, I mean, a hard question to answer, maybe, or maybe a very easy question to answer. Do you like this piece? Do I like this piece? <laughs> of, um, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like it. Um, uh, what, that's such an interesting question because there's this, there's this, it like hints at a much broader question that I think, um, I don't know what, um, I mean, maybe, you can speak to your experience, Dr. Holter, um, in the study of composition, but like whether or not you actually ought to like the pieces that you write. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's a, it was, I thought it was a fascinating question when it was posed last week by one of our violinists. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, and, you know, I, wonder, I wonder if it might have meant were you satisfied or happy with your finished project, your ah. finished, the finished piece. That's kind of where I, heard it from, but I'm, I can't be sure. I see. Um, I, I, I mean, yeah, I think with any, with any project, there's a certain amount of, um, you finish it, the, the things that get projects done for me are deadlines. So it's always, there's always a certain amount of um, uh, compromising based on, you know, my various commitments. 
Um, I think that I like to think of each individual project as like a snapshot of where my head was at that time. Um, I think going back to revise things isn't usually as productive. It depends, um, but kind of once a thing is is out like there and done, I and and it kind of works. Like you know, if there if there are things in the piece that don't work like technically or musically, certainly um, revisions are um, okay. But um, yeah, I mean, I was just thrilled that I was asked to write this piece for um, this group that I, you know, uh, have a special connection to. But yeah, I think it's not good to, I mean, I don't know. I try not to dwell on like, oh, I could have done this differently. But I mean, of course, you, you always think about those things. But yeah. Well, whether you like it or not, we do. Oh, thanks. <laughs> That's very sweet. Yeah, let's not forget who's working for whom here, right? What matters is whether we like it because we really like it. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I'm being a little bit facetious, of course. Um, <laughs> no, it is. It is interesting to hear your thoughts on it, and uh, it, it. That's a question that sort of has two uh, uh, valences. One of which will get more, may become more of a thing for you as you get older. The first question of like, did this, did it work? Did it do the thing that I meant it to do? Is a question you can address. You'll, you know, you'll have a really good sense about that uh, on April 10th when the piece gets its world premiere. Um, the, the second question of like, should I have tried to do this, right? Is this, mm -hmm. is this, was this the right piece to have written at this time? That's a question that you may find yourself coming back to, you know, in, in, the, in the future or you, you very well may hear to the 10th and say like, that was exactly the right piece for the right time. And yeah. uh, props to you if you can say that then, I, I think you may. <laughs> no, I think I think it's it's fast. I I think I I like comp my dad's um uh, uh neurobiologist. I have no talent for the sciences at all, but I always like think of composing like a sort of science experiment. Like I just get to try out these things um, and see if they work. Kind of. Um, um, do you want me to address more questions in the chat? Yeah, please. Okay. Um, uh, what instruments do you play, Talia? I the only thing that I feel like solid at is singing. Um, I'm an okay pianist. Um, I like playing piano alone in you know the confines of my own space, and I write using the piano a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, I was pretty serious about percussion for a while. I, I I used to play timpani in my own local youth orchestra um, in Columbus, um, but I don't really do that anymore. So I'd say voice is like the main thing, and then a bit of piano, um, and. Uh, Adelaide, that is a, a great question. Tips for new composers. The best advice that I ever got when I was in middle school from a composer was to listen to as much music as you can. Um, because you just have to, you just have to listen to everything. <laughs> you need to take in everything and um, and really think about, like finding the things that speak to you and then own, like then drawing the connection between, okay, I really like this. Why do I like this? What's going on with this piece that makes me like it? What gives it this particular effect? And like sort of dissecting in a way and doing a deep dive into this, these things that you love. I feel like those are kind of the first important steps. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for me, it was hearing something like, like I said, hearing like Britain on the radio and then being like, ooh, like that color that he gets in that moment is so cool. Um, there are like online scores. I don't know if you know about IMSLP. Um, Britain wouldn't be on IMSLP, but it's, it's, a, it's a, an online database of, there you go, um, public music in the public domain that isn't under any copyright. So you can just download it for free. Um, so, um, looking at scores of pieces, like looking at composers who have done things that are, that you're like, oh, that's really cool. I wanna give that a try and like figuring out how they did those things. That's really great. Um, I mean, just try it out. Like there's no, I, I feel like there's, there's a kind of, um, uh, there's a kind of pressure that like you have to make this fully formed really amazing thing right away. And it's uh, my first composition teacher ever made me do a bunch of like really hard assignments. And at one point I was sort of, you know, hitting my head against the wall, getting stuck. And she was like, you know, this isn't gonna be your magnum opus. This isn't gonna be like, you know, this is just an exercise, just figure out a way to get it done. Um, and it's kind of like when you're in school, like writing essays, like you're not expected to, you know, just the practice of doing it is kind of great. Um, 
And then I'd also say like, write music for your friends and get them to play it for you. Bribe them with like snacks and anything that they want. Um, and just have your like, have your music done. Cause that's the, um, you know, having a performance is the kind of last, it's really when a piece gets finished in a way. Um, uh, other questions, everybody check out IMSLP. Um, Aiden asks if I've made other pieces, then are we there? Yes, I've made a, a whole bunch. <laughs> um, in school, they make you, my first year of school, you have to, um, I had to write like a piece a week for like many months <laughs> um, uh, as a kind of uh, sort of just um, mental exercise. Um, but yeah, I've, I will, pretty much anybody who asks me for a piece, I will write them a piece because I just love doing it so much. So I've written a lot of music. Um, uh, as a function of being in school and whatever. And for, for all, all sorts of things interest me. So I've written a lot for, lately I've been writing a lot for voice because I like working with like text, setting poems. Um, uh, earlier this year, I wrote a piece for a uh, violist slash folk singer with Sinfonietta Orchestra at Oberlin, which was really fun. Um, uh, writing a piano piece right now. So yeah, um, all sorts of things. Um, do you think that the piece fits what you wanted to achieve? Um, I think so, yes. I mean, again, you know, it's, we, uh, there's this thing, you know, um, hearing something only in your head and on MIDI, although I try to avoid MIDI as much as I can, um, it's only um, when you hear it live that you really get a sense of, you know, how it's gone. Um, so, uh, I, 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 you know, there's no way to really know until you hear it, but I, you know, I feel, I feel confident about it. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Um, I think it points to a question of like how you measure your own success as a composer, which can sometimes, um, uh, be tricky. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I think it's, you know, reductively, yes, <laughs> that would be my answer. Can I ask, uh, how do you want this piece uh, to make the listener feel? Mm. Or how do you want this piece to invite the listener to feel? Or how do you want this piece to enable the listener to feel, let's say? Um, great question. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I hope that it's a sort of energizing, fun piece. Um, I, that was sort of my intent. Um, and uh, that's kind of, I mean, beyond that, um, I don't think, I don't, I don't think they, you know, they, they can feel however they want. <laughs> and that's, that's fine. Um, uh, yeah, that's, I, I guess that's what I'd say. Um, am I writing anything right now? Right now? Um, yes, I'm working on uh, a piece for violin and piano for my friend's recital. You know Johnham, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm writing a piece for Johnham right now for his recital. Um, wow. Yeah, um, he is amazing, 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 amazing musician. Um, and then writing a piece for um, my violist friend, aforementioned violist singer friend um, for viola and piano. Um, and then uh, a piece for three violas. Um, so a lot of a lot of viola lately, actually. <laughs> um, that's what I'm working on right now. Mrs. Willett, uh, can I kick it to you? Any particular questions for Benjamin while I'm while I'm scouring the list here? So last week at our rehearsal with the violins, we've we've learned our notes and rhythms. That's always step one. So last week at the rehearsal, we started really examining the bowing mm. and really trying to um, give, you know, the articulations their true meaning. And so at the beginning, we're, we're at the frog and it's really um, some heavier aggressive playing. Mm. Um, and they did quite well with it. Um, mm. And we're lifting and that's allowing us to to place the emphasis on the beat. Um, and I'll do that with the cellists and the bass player and the bass players and the violas the next time we meet. 
But then the step after that is going to be the church-like part, mm. uh, the section. And there, I think the kids have a pretty good sense of, you know, a smoother, more connected uh, length to the bow. Mm. Um, what outside of what I just mentioned, is there anything more you would elaborate on with what you intended? Are we on the right track? What would you add to the things I just spoke about um, that stand out in your mind? I think, I think you're, I mean, that all sounds spot on. Um, okay, good. And I'm glad to hear that. Um, I don't know. It's, it always fascinates me to hear about, because um, I'm not a string player by trade. So um, as much as I've learned, it's always a learning experience for me, um, uh, which is also part of why I enjoy composing. I get to learn so much about so many different things. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, that that sounds that sounds wonderful. I think that I I don't um, I feel um, I don't know that I'd be comfortable giving more being obstinate about any sort of bowing thing beyond that because I just don't. I can't physicalize it in my own body in the way that I know you you all can. Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, I, I trust your judgment for sure. <laughs> okay, good. And that in that opening, that the cello line that, that's in tenor clef, the, the kids have been having a great time learning that. Thank you for <laughs> giving them the challenge. I think they appreciate it. Um, <laughs> but that's contrary to the big, heavy, aggressive, rhythmic, stuff that we did in the violins last week mm. and so the fun part is going to be to represent both of those and to me that's what makes it so interesting i think for the listener that they're going to get both of those sounds at the same time and um i don't know that that might be unexpected for some um mm. but we're we we're going to work on drawing that cello line out um, which will be tricky because the rest of them are making quite a ruckus with, with the right. Um So we'll be learning how to balance that. Mm. So. Well, we're just about at our time. Uh, we got about two, one, two minutes left. Do we have any final questions for Benjamin Martin real quick before we sign off here? Okay. That's about it. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank uh, you for having me. It's a pleasure. Oh, well, that's great. And it's always great to uh, be able to speak to a real life composer uh, and <laughs> ask questions about the, the piece that we're working on and learn a little bit more about the craft uh, and your journey and all of that good stuff. So thank you again. Thanks, Symphony and Musicians, for logging on, uh, asking questions and participating. And uh, everybody, have a good Sunday and stay warm. And we will see you next time Symphonietta is scheduled to rehearse. Thank you very much. Thank you, Benjamin. Thanks. Take care.